drafts. Uh, I, I guess we're straight into drafts. So I'll I'll quell that point for now. We can come back to it. Let's look at what's gone through already. The Tristana respect band away from light. That is not how I expected this draft to start. Actually, it's actually been banned away pretty much every series, every game since that series where he just popped off on it. Like he's not got his hands on it. So I'm not 100% surprised to see that one come in. However, this does leave that Pantheon pick. And this is what I love from Tarzan. Tarzan traditionally has always been an early game jungler. And when we talk about setting up these laners, the Pantheon is the perfect pick to start playing down towards this bottom side. So now, with the likes of the, the Kai'Sa, this Tristana taken off the board. My eyes are drifting towards this Zaya, I think is the big pick now, or maybe even the Aphelios to come in for light, as we want to see those late game scaling AD carries for the LNG bot. Oh, we talked about how BLG wants to play around that bottom lane. A Twisted Fate is a good way to do that. Zika looking to get out of the mid lane and run around the map as Meteor goes for this Graves that despite the win rate is still consistently a high priority pick here in the LPL. Over to LNG now. So they're looking towards their bottom line. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the Graves into the Pantheon though. Pantheon like he can do a lot of damage to you early. He's got a pretty good clear but also the fact is engage means that he can just kind of fly over the head of you. It means it's really difficult to deal with but LNG they're not going for the late game scale anymore. They want to get aggressive so right now LNG are following up on what we wanted to see from them playing down towards this bottom side with the composition that they've at least drafted for the moment. Whereas the upside for BLG, we're much more about this long range pick. So chances are we might even see like something like the, the Camille or something along these lines for Bu Bu. So then you could open up the opportunity to play in through your top side of the map and still look for these kind of split push pick oriented styles of, of your composition. We'll ban on towards Icon here with the Galio taken off of the board. And LNG could look towards... I mean, the Camille's already taken off. You could ban some of these other top laners if you really wanted. We'll have to see. The Gragas has been the decision here, which could be top. Could be even support, I guess. Probably top lane, realistically, though. What do you want to see banned here by BLG? Just another mid laner towards Icon? Um, yeah, I think maybe something that can... Well, I was gonna. I wasn't actually going to say the Oriana. I was going to say something maybe like the Zoe or maybe something along these lines that can make it a little bit more difficult for the Twisted Fate to get out of lane. I mean, we've even seen the Rise do very well against this Twisted Fate where you just hold him in lane, you've got the Realm Warp to follow. But either way, I think you still got these options now as Icon if you want to, although Icon hasn't really been straying too far away from what have been his standard picks of like the Oriana, the Zoe, and even bringing out something like the Azir. Well, towards the picks we go. Ooh, I'd love to see it. We'll see what is locked in. They're looking towards a support pick at very least. And the Rel comes on through. Not a combo you'd expect though. Rel Jin does not scream at me that it would be great. Yeah, because Rel wants to go aggressive. And Jin can follow up, but certainly not in the same way as say something like the Samira that we see on the opposite side. Or even something like a Zaya could work really well. Um, I'm actually surprised to see this. It looks more like it's trying to give it a little bit of survivability towards the Jin, where you get all that extra armor and magic resist. So when we see this early attention from LNG towards the bottom side, maybe you can try and help him out there. Maybe you can actually uh, use that magnetism to try and draw members off the Jin and buy him space. But I'm not fully convinced by this rel. I prefer seeing her used as an offensive tool rather than the defensive tool that she'll be used as on BLG side. Well, the Nart blind once again. We see this all the time here in the LPL. Kuya going to be grabbing that one for himself. And Bu Bu has his pick of the litter, basically, on, on good players into Nart. Obviously, the Camille was banned, but you've, he's already hovered the Gangplank. He's hovered the Jace. Both really great answers. And it's going to be the Jace is the decision in the end. One thing I will say about this composition from BLG, very heavily AD with uh, just a little bit of AP damage coming from Twisted Fate. Yeah, uh, way too much for my liking. I actually would have preferred to see the um, the Camille come through because what a lot of people don't realize is that, it's well, I know it's banned. Man. True. But at least even the, the Fiora, something along these lines that at least splits the, the damage repertoire because you don't really have to worry about the, the magic for damage coming through from the Twisted Fate of someone like Makuya or even Tarzan. Um, so you can go heavily in towards the likes of this armor. Um, however, I, I really like what LNG have here. You've got a very definitive player and bot in the early stage of the game. You can have Icon who can look to try and keep this Mr. Fate in check. And then when you get to the, the 
the mid game, you're so super strong just off of the one item with the spice coming off of the likes of the Ludus Tempest and that uh, Moro Shield Bow for the Samir in the bottom. So BLG sitting pretty here on the stage, getting ready to jump in the game. And it feels like Spirits are high. You can see Mark there trying to trying to tell the team what's up. But it always feels like Mark is a very vocal player. Every time you see him on the camera, he's bouncing around. He's telling people what's up. Up to the side of LNG. Uh, not quite as uh, happy and bubbly over in the LNG camp right now. But you know what? Once they get into the game, I'm sure that will all change. I'm sure that the gameplay will represent a much happier future for them. We take a look over these compositions. I'm looking towards Icon and Zika actually to get out of this lane. Both of them on picks that can get out of that mid lane and roam and influence the rest of the map. Certainly more so for Zika. For Icon, it's kind of trying to keep Zika in check for as long as possible. Now, you can get down towards this bottom lane and stuff, but it'll be hard to try and do so. Instead, just keep him in the 1v1, keep him busy and make sure that Zika can't have that impact. The bigger thing for me, though, is looking at um, the issues that we pointed out for LNG. When we were talking about LNG, we're saying, or sorry, for BLG, we're saying for BLG, they want to move away, or at least should be able to move away from Mark and Bubu being their engage tools. And that's what we've seen here. Zika and Aiming are actually the two big engage tools now for this BLG squad, which means it relieves a lot of the pressure from Mark and obviously Bubu with this Jace to actually set up these engages. And maybe we'll see cleaner engages coming through from BLG because when Aiming is on this Jin, he has been impeccable in setting up these fights, whether it be with a deadly flourish or just going, right, I'm open up with the curtain call. Let's go. That's the go button. And we've seen aiming has been pretty on point with everything that he's been doing so far in the LPL. As we said before, statistically, he's very much the focus for this team. With this kind of composition, though, you don't expect Jin ever to really be like a hard carry for a squad. But certainly, he'll be the one that is setting up the engage. And what did we say before when he's played things like the Kaiser? He is the one that's setting up the engages. So it feels like this Jin kind of ticks that box quite nicely. Exactly, and why we wanted to see them move, or at least move in this direction, if they're not able to fix the issues with Mark and Fubu. However, <clears throat> looking at our starts for both these junglers, we we're already talking about Tarzan wanting to go for these early plays down bot side. He's pathing already down towards this lane. Whereas for Meteor, wanting to play around Fubu, making sure that Fubu can go for these early aggressive trades. What you really need as a Jace is the ability to shove in these lanes, chip away at turrets, and you need a jungler that's willing to not only play towards your lane, but get some deep vision there. So I expect Meteor to go for this kind of five camp clear in towards getting some vision on top side and allowing Bubu to get aggressive onto Mikuya. We'll see if, uh, if they can get a bit of pressure onto Mikuya. I'm keeping my eyes on Tarzan because he did get that Pantheon for himself. We know... How good Tarzan is when he gets on the Pantheon. This is his most played pick in the LPL. Although, it's tied with Nidalee. Well, this will be the third game for Pantheon. So, it will be his most played now. But, he's played five different junglers. This guy does not necessarily have a limit to his champion pool. But, I want to see him getting aggressive and getting into these lanes. Especially for Light and Iwondi. We talked about how Light and Iwondi, they're kind of the setup, right? They are the, the carries on this side for LNG. They've got a lane that can definitely dominate if they could get ahead. I'd love to see Tarzan making his way down there. Yeah, especially Iwandi. Iwandi has been the engage tool for LNG. We saw the highlight clip where he's got that five-man pulverize. I think everyone's kind of had to look at that. Like, I'm very excited to see what Iwandi can do. And especially for Mikuya, who's been a little bit lackluster when it comes to engages. But... Oh, flash in the mid lane. Tarzan making things happen. Flash from Icon. And he steals the flash from Zika. It's stylish and it's beautiful. Icon with first blood. Okay, so it looks like LNG are going to mix things up a little bit. Let's play towards Zika in the mid lane. Have him win that TF matchup so this Pexky TF cannot have any impact elsewhere. And now we can look to start to play elsewhere on the map. So nice call here. Although top lane, Makuya, that's a, a lot of trade damage to be taken. Yeah, this is the way that that Jace versus not matchup is. Probably going to be for most of the game, unfortunately, for Mikuya. He's probably going to be left out to dry just a little bit on the top side of the map. Because Tarzan, he's found a win in the mid lane. He'll probably look to transition that elsewhere as well. But this feels good to see Icon getting some kills. We keep on talking about how Icon 
Been a little lackluster when it comes to carrying the game, but setting him up with an early advantage is certainly a good way to try and shore up some of the mid-game struggles. Exactly. And I think that the biggest thing for me is actually getting Icon grouped with the team, which I think LNG will certainly be looking to do as often as they possibly can. Because you have Mikuyi in this top side who's already taken portraits from Bubu. It doesn't get much better, especially going with Grasp of uh, Grasp the Undying. I actually would have preferred to see him go Fleet Footwork. You don't really get the opportunity to use Grasp of the Undying on this range advantage that Bubu has. And you are going to see him the more poke and punishment that Mikuya takes the more difficult it gets for him to actually stay in this lane because he's just not healing off of the grasp you can see just the the push battle in that mid lane as uh we do see the minion dematerialize actually from icon so looking very much to just like clear these minions asap he'll be using that on the caster minions to increase his damage i don't know if he i don't think he quite spotted the recall finally does notice it and it gets him a free trouble bubble good little trade there on Zika. This is really big for uh, Icon, and you may not realize it, but what Zika was trying to do is back off Cannon Minion, so then he can come back to the lane here with full health and mana, so he can hit that level 6 and instantly try and roam. This is why you've got Meteor who's trying to come in to help shove that wave, because he needs to back ASAP, but Icon getting some nice pressure and stopping that means they are now kind of where, okay, Zika, we got to make this play happen now, but already... Moving towards his top side, Mikuya's backed off. The entire cover has been blown in the BLG game plan. Yeah, and you can see that Tarzan is like, all right, well, since we know that Zika has just had to recall, he's had to go get mana, and they've helped him shove in uh, mid lane, then gone towards top side. That, to me, is a free drake. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Tarzan moves towards this bottom side of the map. Iwandi moves up to help him out. And also, bear in mind, aiming and mark have been pushed underneath their tower pretty much all games so far. So there's not really any way that BLG can contest. Next objective would be that Herald that's up in about a minute and a half. And I have to ask you, Dagda, who are we favoring for this one? Because I feel like both compositions are decently strong early on. I wasn't sure who I was going to favor coming up to this until I saw this first TF usage because TF is so crucial on getting that first play off. And now because they haven't got that play onto Makuya, Makuya is free to push this wave out. Way, our Meteor even has been casting way too much jungle away. But Meteor has moved down <laughs> towards this bottom side of the map. And uh, it means you can't actually go for these plays again. You've got to take your time now and set these up. So from LNG, because there's no like small gold lead or at least these kills that are going over in favor of BLG, you've got advantage mid. You should have push bot to roam first towards Rift Herald. I honestly think it's going to be LNG who should be able to take this Rift Herald and a potential team fight if it does pop up. Icon does manage to get his cannon there. I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to grab that. And yeah, on, on your point of like accidentally say way instead of Tarzan there, like especially on a day like today where you start yeah. the day off with an absolute banger that goes the full three games going into the second series as a caster and then you're seeing the same picks with different names on sometimes your mind just gets a little bit muddled up and you just kind of trip over yourself a little and my mind has just been a case of like how many ways am i saying for the jungle it's not a case of these are like different names it was just which how way many is this saying? jungle matchup gonna go yeah exactly so yeah brain is fully in the wrong space but anyway Coming back into this, uh, this is kind of set BLG on the back foot a little bit. Not having the jungler be as uh, interactive as we were hoping. And this has actually been something Meteor has done quite a lot. Is that Meteor isn't very focused on lanes. He's more focused on the likes of early dragons. On trying to set up his lanes for success. And I think it's come back to bite him a bit because... With BLG, you don't really have the strong laners that can just do it themselves. They are people that are going to need some help. It's not like you've yeah. got like Knight or Rookie or, you know, the Jackie Love on the bottom side. These are players that, and often both in the solo laners, will need some sort of assistance. Yeah, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news or anything here, Dagda, but uh, he hasn't made any impact on any lanes. He's also slightly down in CS. There's also uh, an impact in a lane from Tarzan and a Drake from Tarzan. So in basically every category available, Tarzan is leading in that jungle matchup right now. But Meteor wants to change that as he starts this Herald off or in fact, just going for the Skull Crab. Tarzan wants to steal it. I don't know whether Tarzan got spotted on the on the uh, scanner there, but Meteor should be able to get out of this one. Does have his flash available, forced out the back of the pit. Now, Makuya 
Chasing on to Bu Bu as he knows that he's got reinforcements. He's just making sure nobody can go anywhere near this Herald. And I was wrong. I spoke too soon. He's Tarzan that's leading the charge. Yeah, they're going to take this. Um, the pings had actually gone down from BLG on a Wandy dipping out of the bot lane. So they knew that this was not going to be a favorable fight. And they already weren't in a position. You can see there that even though Graves gets his true grit and uh, is able to get a bunch of armor off of that passive, Pantheon don't care. He's just going to go and stun you. You don't get time to build it up. And he just whacks you with this crit. So it's always going to be Pantheon that if he goes 1v1 against the Graves, get the advantage. And especially with the bot lane moving first, it's LNG who should get this Rift turned. Yeah, and you see Light now recalling. Light wasn't a part of that previous play, but now everything's reset once again. Meteor went back to base. This is LNG starting it up. They're well aware that BLG know about this one. This isn't a matter of, uh, oh, can we sneak this away? This is a matter of, you can't fight us right now. We know we're stronger than you. We're going to take a Herald off the back of But it's a lot of other stuff as well that LNG are doing really well with. So you can see Light's actually backed away from bot side. He's kind of just waiting until everyone goes back to their basics and where they're supposed to be. Because it gives the opportunity here for BLG, if Light's in that bottom lane, to go for the cross map play. Get Zeke in here with the Destiny, try and make some funky plays with the Twist of Fate. But because Light is respecting that, he's not giving them the opportunity to actually do anything. Now, yes, maybe he'll lose a little bit of CS here. He doesn't even, but BLG can't get an answer anywhere. Yeah, and they are going to still be just about even in CS anyway. So, realistically, any kind of discrepancy in that bot lane is is minuscule at very best. No tower plates have even gone down just yet. Second Drake coming up, though, Dagda. Ten seconds on that one. And Meteor looks to be in position. Tarzan miles away, but bear in mind that Grand Starfall would be available if Tarzan does want to fly across the map and get involved. And that's what I'm keeping an eye out for here is if they want to go for the Grand Starfall, in the bot, the only issue they have is that Zika can join in way quicker than Icon. So honestly, I think from LNG's point of view, it's Cloud Drake. We're not really in a position to fight for this. Let's instead try to get pressure on this bottom side and see if we can use this Rift Herald to crack open one of these towers or even just get a good amount of gold in towards Light as Light is going to be the big carry in these team fights. So getting the Samira ahead will make way more sense. So opting out of the Drake as you... Uh correctly prescribed there Ooh, knock up over the wall i've never seen that before I mean, that was i won the on the low ground and mark on the high ground but the pulverized still managed to hit him i didn't even know you yeah could i do that. i have seen it and it's the most frustrating thing ever because you're trying to make this play you're trying to burn a summoner spell you're trying to burn a health bar and this guy just gets over the wall for no real good reason other than ah there was a slight delay between you know the headbutt and the pulverize it is so frustrating well, he's made it over anyway, so he's going to get away with it this time. As, uh, oh, the turret plate doesn't go down. They were so damn close to Bu Bu getting himself 160 gold. Tarzan just ults into the mid lane. Uh, Dagda. Why? <laughs> I'm um, confused on this one. I don't know. I think they were trying to set up a play, <laughs> but Zika had actually just re maybe pushed too far back and they couldn't quite do it. Um, they do clear Sorry. out the wave, though. And now they have multiple members here in this mid lane to try and crack this one open. Goes, like a good flash from Bu Bu though. Makuya can't really make it happen. Does that flash oh, available? Look at Tarzan. To try? That could be it. Jumps in, gets the Nar into the wall. Doesn't quite finish it, but one more auto will do the trick. Makuya with the solo kill. In the counter matchup as well. Mikuya coming out clutch there. That was so well done. Actually managing to get on top of Bu Bu, but... Bu, this is the problem that we've kind of had with him is he's always been that weak side top laner, been more the, the tanks and the fighters, but trying to put him onto a carry just has not worked out. And we're seeing it once again in a favorable matchup. He's behind in CES. He hasn't gotten the attention that he was hoping for from Zika. And as a result, the top lane is getting a little bit skewed. And importantly, when you look at the scoreboard, Tarzan has himself the Gore Drinker. Light has himself a Shield Bow. Everybody on this team for LNG is all of a sudden completely invincible. These skirmishes are going to become a little more difficult for BLG. And we did see the charge goes in. Turret plate shared with Icon. 
And here as well, coming back to just BLG, they really needed to get the ball rolling in the early stages. They've got this twisted fate, but thanks to the nice plays from LNG, Zika hasn't actually, well, specifically Icon, Zika wasn't actually able to get out of this lane to make that timing play that we we're talking about. So Bubu doesn't get an advantage. So now the Jace is behind. This TF pick has kind of running uh, out of steam as well because of the way LNG have set up the map. So overall, LNG are in a really good spot now coming into this mid game where they can look for these big fights, where they can look towards these dragons and look to take the fight to BLG. And I have to say, Dag, that I'm a little bit sad at how this game has gone so far because we saw the Samira locked in on the bot side alongside Alistair. We've been talking um, how, about how this is light versus aiming as these big AD carries. I want these stepping in there as well. Like... I was hoping that this would be an explosive battle of the bottom lanes, but so far, we're 15 minutes in and it's two and zero on the scoreboard. I wanted more out of LNG. I wanted a bit of pace and here. It hasn't it hasn't even been bot lane, right? We've seen Tarzan make these plays towards Icon. We've seen the solo kill from Makuya. Like, we haven't actually seen a huge amount. Now, this is something that, to be fair, Pantheons do quite a bit. Like, new style Pantheon is as strange as it sounds often, just let's just farm as quick as we can to get towards Gore Drinker. And once we have that item, that spike is so incredibly strong that that's when we look to make these plays. He still has that Grand Starfall, so Tarzan can still look to make these plays. But again, I wish he'd make a little bit more attention down towards this bottom lane with how potent Iwandi has been in these fights, how strong Light has been when he gets a lead. I would love to see him use that Grand Starfall, especially if Amy and Mark try to overextend. Amy doesn't even have the likes of a cleanse. Like, he is so vulnerable if they can get onto him. So my question to you then, Dagda, is we've got a Drake coming up in 40 seconds. Could that be the golden opportunity here for LNG to put their foot down and force a play? Well, I would actually like to see LNG backed a little bit sooner to get vision control. They're only now starting to clear it out. And certainly when I look at BLG, they're pretty okay leaving Amy like back on his own side of the jungle, opening up with the curtain call. So he's not really in too much danger. You can have Zika use the destiny to, to spot out where LNG are going to be. So for BLG, they have many ways of getting into river and understanding you know how far they can push the boat where so for lng they actually needed to try and get deeper vision control to try and pick blg before they came in towards river but not gonna be able to get that down but it looks like anyway blg they're not gonna try and fight for this dragon they're gonna look for a play top instead well that's incredibly sad and i'm incredibly disappointed i want that on record that I'm very disappointed in you, BLG. You didn't fight for my entertainment. You gotta I know that you're in a competition wagon. right now, but I'm a spectator and I want to see blood. BLG, in the meantime, though, they will trade this one. So we get some... Uh, we get dragon blood on the bot side. We get purple weird void blood on the top side as their eye squelches many times. I will say, despite how much damage it does, that is a tanky eye. The fact that the Herald reopens its back multiple times while it's just getting pulverized... It's not a it's clever bad strategy, beat, is it? No, it's just bad it's strategy. It's like, gets right? hit one time, closes it, and he's like, maybe they've gone while they continue to what, shock. what does it even need it for? Like, clearly it's able to figure out where you are, because when you move around, it still chases you, whether the eyes closed or not. So what's it even there for? Mm. This just seems it's like... Look, I'm... Look, whatever way evolution goes, it tends to get rid of really terrible things that can hurt you. This seems like Evolution overlooked a really big problem with the, that's, the Rift Herald. That's that. where you're wrong, though, Dagda, because this isn't Evolution. It's a Void creature, right? So it's some, like, Scuttle Crab or something that got corrupted by the Void. So it's not proper Evolution. This is just weird mutation, which is probably why it's so pathetically suboptimal. Terrible creature. Take it back, right? I want a refund. <laughs> Three out of ten. Would not, would not Void again. <laughs> <laughs> It is pretty good at charging into towers, though. I'll give it that. Um, let's have a look at where we're on the map, though, because we're heading towards the 20-minute mark now, Dagda, and we're starting to see Mythics across the board. BLG now slam a Herald in the mid lane. Maybe we finally get some action. Yeah, I mean, there you go, Curtain Call. This has been pretty strong from BLG prior. They will get the charge. Won't actually get the terror, though. I want to... Okay, tower goes down. Now they engage. On to Tarzan, they go, and... Well, that's why you pick Rel, right? Knock up and taken down. Easy peasy. I was about to say, usually BLG will go for this play, especially when they have a gin of, hey, let's all group up and use the curtain call to zone members of uh, the opponent away. 
Whoever, Light. No, he's fine in the top lane. But they usually, you know, everyone backs away. And you could see there from LNG, they had started to back away. But Tarzan hadn't checked his phone. Didn't realize that everyone else wasn't going to the same place as he was. And now, Light actually overextended here. But he's... I was going to say he snuck away. He's not even trying to sneak away. He's going to try and clear the wave. I don't think he's aware that he's totally alone on this one. Blocks a lot, though. And I wonder he slides in on the side of the play. Light one stack away from getting that ultimate available. He's playing it safe as the rest of the team comes in the side of the fight. And LNG find it. In comes the man from the sky. Tarzan arrives on the scene and chases BLG away through their own jungle. Denying the blast cone from Mark. Staying on top of the horsey who flashes over the wall. Now aiming. Has to drop a trap to keep himself safe. Trouble bubble, though. That's going to be an easy kill for Icon. And LNG well and truly on top of the situation. I have never had a man more redeemed in my eyes than Iwandi. Because when I came into last split and I heard that this guy was a Janna main, I was out. I hate Jannas. I play engaged supports. I hate Jannas. And now watching Iwandi and the beauty that he has on this Alistair and all these engaged supports, this is amazing. He's actually set up the Baron here, I but... BLG are looking to contest. I've got to interrupt you here, Dagda. Icon's in trouble. Oh, he jumped into the shot, but the shots are denied now as Icon just walks into the 1v1. Had a stop. What? Icon, what? What is going on right here? Zika locks a red card. This is the worst 1v1 I think I've ever <laughs> seen. Icon just dips out into the jungle now as the rest of LNG get collapsed upon. Bu Bu trying to make his way into the fray, but the boomerang slows everybody down and gives them an escape. That was not clean from anybody. No, but BLG, they can actually turn back over towards this Baron because you've got Bu Bu, you've got Meteor who can do a whole heap of damage as well. So it actually looks like LNG may have cost themselves this Baron. They need to contest. Oh, Makuya is about to turn mega though. 5,000 still on the Baron. Tarzan is here, has Smite available. Meteor does as well, and he's one level up. In they go. Meganar knocks him through in the three-man knock-up as well. BLG starting off, but taken down. And look at Light go with the double. He wants Meteor as well. One more tap would do the trick, but Meteor backs away. And suddenly, the shoe is on the other foot. It's LNG on the Baron. I don't even know if they're on feet anymore. With the amount of times the shoe's been moved, I'm pretty sure it's on an arm. But either way, LNG managed to take that team fight off of a gorgeous narrow ultimate from Makuya, knocking three people into the wall, setting up life beautifully for the Infernal Trigger. And that is the Baron for LNG. And you know what, Dagda? The amount this footwear is moving about, it's more of a flip-flop because you ain't got time for laces in this game now. Everything started so damn slow, but we have sped up the pace. And LNG are more than happy about that. Now, 5,000 gold ahead. Two drakes to work with. And perfect reset time. It's going to this third drake as well. And I want to watch Makuya here. Like, this ultimate is so well done. Set up again by Iwandi, who manages to at least give a little bit of space towards Makuya. And then that flash Nara into the wall. They're able to pick up the fight. However, we're going to be coming straight out of this into a dragon. And... I have a feeling LNG are going to be looking to rinse and repeat here. They can shove in with this Baron buff, but it looks like BLG have realized, look, we cannot contest a Baron up LNG with a 5k gold lead, with a composition that's hit every spike that it could possibly hope for when it comes to power, and they will just back away. Aiming just dashed away, takes half of his health from single paddle star there. And Icon is feeling real good. 4, 0, and 3 on the Zoe. And this has been one of the picks where Icon has been able to look good. We've criticized Icon a reasonable amount this split already for mispositioning when he's the one with the lead, not being able to transition that. But this game, he's looking fantastic. He's getting the poke out. He's getting good trouble bubbles. He's doing everything you need out of your Zoe carry. Aside from the 1v1 we saw in the top lane, we'll just pre <laughs> pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> hey, to be fair, I'm more impressed he got out of that one. That one was looking a bit dicey. This is looking dicey, though, for Bu Bu. Bit of damage coming on through, but I don't quite finish it off. It was a good bubble onto Zika, but he was able to get behind the minion wave. And now, as, as we said, they've got Barret, and they have long-range carries to hit away at these turrets with. In the meantime, BLG have no way to close the gap. When you look at the gold here, three laners from the side of LNG, all ahead of anyone on the side of BLG. It's a huge gold lead at this stage. They still have a tier one to take, so there's still standing gold for them to sweep up as well on the top side of the map. They've got ages until the next objective is up. This is, this is a playground now for LNG. 
And I love that they're using uh, the Pantheon as this like split push tool as well. Because <clears throat> Makuya definitely wants to be grouped with the team. He does far better when he's able to kind of use his poke underneath these towers, but being there for when a team fight kicks off. And Pantheon, well, he prefers when he's able to pick out Amy. I'm just going to jump straight in onto this AD carry the second they open up a curtain call. So I love the way LNG are even playing the map state right now. And it's although it started off very, very slowly, you can see LNG were very tuned in to what they needed to do this game. Shutting down Zika in the early stage of the game with the gank, Having Icon stop his reset as well so they couldn't go to dive onto Makuya at the level 7. And from that point forward, they've been able to snowball these advantages into objectives, both with Rift Heralds and with Dragons, and using the fact that they are stronger in the team fights to the best of their advantages. And once again, we're seeing these Twisted Fates kind of lackluster, right? We set up the fact that with Zika on the Twisted Fate, he needed to get out of the mid lane. He needed to roam around and make things happen. He's 0 and 3 right now. And last year, the story of Zika was that Vici were building this squad around him, that he was going to be the big all star carry. He was going to be Coma's like trained up new baby faker. It just never, ever happened. And it feels like we're seeing that version of Zika once again. And the thing is, it's Twisted Fate as well is really, really difficult to make work if you don't get that initial gank off. Because what ends up happening is that, as previously, like last split, you'd end up getting the catalyst, which meant that you'd still get a bunch of mana and you could still shove really effectively. But because now the Twisted Fate is building into this rocket belt, which doesn't offer as much in the way of that mana or even the regen whatsoever, you don't get the opportunity to push as heavy as you want to and make these roams happen as often with the destiny so if you start to fall behind and you're not able to hit these like key resets where you're coming back at that you know 5 30 mark into your mid lane to get the the full health full mana and look for that very quick destiny at level six you just don't really have the opportunity to do it again because you're up against like mana flow bands and ludens tempest and lost chapters that are giving you way more mana as the opponent Here's the pick that they've wanted all game. Tarzan blocks a lot of the damage and Core Drinker keeps him alive. <laughs> they can't even get the pick. Oh, this is just sad oh, at this God. point. They have no damage whatsoever. Uh, even when BLG moved the engagement tools to elsewhere, it still doesn't work. Uh, LNG they now. They sacrifice an inhibitor for that. Yeah, inhibitor tower will go down. You get the demolish. Now, you could potentially have Amy open up with the, uh, the curtain call here and try and dissuade LNG, but... They just know what's the point <laughs> at this stage. We're slowly bleeding out. We've so you're got saying PLG have given dragon. up? They've just they completely given up. No, no, you ha they haven't given up. They just need to consider their options for game two. I think Clement had put that beautifully in his last cast, and I'm going to nick that as well. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll let them consider as LNG consider grabbing themselves a Drake in a minute's time. That'll be up 30 seconds on the Baron as well. And let's be honest, LNG can go anywhere do anything the world or sh should i say the rift is their oyster at this point it's uh it's been a beautiful performance coming out from the squad and you know as much as i was disappointed at the lack of action in the early game i you know i do have a brain i do understand that it's not always best to just <laughs> fight for the sake of you? fighting just blood for the blood god like there is more to league of legends than that <laughs> and i like the lng have taken this uh, slow enough, they've stopped BLG having their early game win condition executed and then once they start to outscale, once they start to find some of these fights, then they enact their win conditions and find themselves a lead of their own. And look, it's not like this. It is. It's really, really good. And I want D. And uh, yeah, Zika dips over the wall, but Mark unfortunately is going to find himself alone abandoned by the squad and he may be made of armor but it doesn't seem to matter that much at this point but you you're happy to tank the tower his lng will waltz this one home i don't think there's really much of anything blg can do to contest at this stage if they want lng can go towards this mountain soul they can certainly get the mid inhib i think they could have maybe gone top for the inhib as well but i think opting into the soul perfectly fine here we go the curtain call you talked about before dagda uh we're going to call that See an engage. We're going to say that they engaged yeah. the fight there. Uh, it didn't quite... You know, it's like it's like when you're driving a manual car. You can engage it into a gear, but sometimes it doesn't actually 
you know, it doesn't properly engage. Uh, and that's exactly what it looks like when the car stalls out. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bu Bu is kind of the horrific noise you hear as he dies, as the carriage dies, yeah. along with you not engaging that. But Tarzan, still looking for more here in the top lane. And honestly, I said, why open up with the curtain call? It's going to do pretty much nothing. I'm glad that Amy helped prove my point in that situation, because there ain't any coming back for BLG in this game. Mountain Soul as well to boot for LNG. And this is just going to be the slow draw and cl close out. So when we start to look at like game two, I think you got to look at Zika. Twi this Twist of Fate hasn't worked out for you at all. And although they had the right ideas, Mikuya played around the early pressure that was going to come out very, very well. So I think his BLG, just go back to the drawing board, uh, try and figure out something else for Zika. But also this Rel for Mark, I have not been impressed with it. I called it out in Champ Select. I was like, look, this is not going to be a combo that works well in the bottom lane. He hasn't been able to do very much in the, the mid game either. And the whole thing has just looked bizarre from BLG, honestly, from start to finish. They got Apic, that one kill that went out to Tarzan. That was the Rel knockup, so yeah. we, <laughs> we take those, I guess. That's basically all of the positives I can throw out for BLG at this point in the game. Here we go, flash forward from Tarzan onto Zika. Now Mark goes into the back line. Good stunts across the team here. BLG don't have a lot of damage to work with. <laughs> Tell you what Light does is he dashes into the middle of everyone, spinning around and taking names as he does it. Icon jumps on forward. Tarzan happy to block some shots. So is Iwandi. And uh, another kill taken down. Icon with his sixth of the game as their Nexus turrets will fall. And honestly, LNG have made this one look easy. BLG very much have to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> this Tarzan, I thought he was actually going to go fully onto the fountain there. I thought he was just going to completely bully them. Just keeping them on the fountain. This is the quarantine zone right there. Is, uh, they're not allowed to leave. That's going to be an easy game number one there for 